Alright, probably going to be a long video, so it's probably going to be on the website. Uh, this guy, Derived Energy Guy. Yeah, him and Pyro, been, uh, even Great Text, I haven't seen the Great Text video yet, been talking about this a uh, natalism, so I guess they call it. Anti natalism. Anti natalism. Well, whatever. I mean, it's just so fucking stupid. I mean, what a fucking stupid name to call it. Um, anyway. Um, it's basically this idea that, you know, people should never have been born. Apparently, it's based on this guy, um, David Benatar's uh, theory espoused in his sentimental sint work. Um, better never to have been born. That's the title of the book. Anyway, yeah, obviously, I have argued um, in parallel. I haven't read that book. Um, this, this crap. And... Um, you know, I say there is some sort of logic theory that can be applied. I mean, and, and it goes to the point that I don't think what we feel, um, the word addiction has to be used. And we have to understand what we, what we gain gratification from isn't a, a true gratification, isn't a true positive. It is only the re um, connection to things we have lost, in a sense. A metaphorical losing, but it's nonetheless real to our psychology, where we essentially are born into a state of deprivation, hunger, horny, uh, wanting, needing, and the life process is attempting to find those pieces and put them back to, to gain our wholeness again. Um, metaphoric wholeness. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a cheese chasing game. The cheese is synthetic, okay? The disasters that we have to navigate are real, and the thing we're chasing is an illusion. It's a rainbow, it's a dragon, it's a whatever you want to call it, it's bullshit. We're chasing a, a, a perception of value, and it's just a perception. It doesn't connect it to anything real. And so we only have this sense of it. We have an artificial sense of it, much like a tobacco addict has a sense of, like, this will fix my problem. I will smoke another one of these, and I will feel better. And it's never resolved in $5 billion and a million cigarettes later. Um, yeah, they're still doing it. They're still hunting for, um, you know, whatever, Red October. Um... So anyway, <clears throat> yeah, so that's basically the context of the argument. Now, all this subjective crap gets piled on top of it, and it's almost impossible to get away from that. I mean, I have to look you know, internally, and I say, okay, yeah, this was all obvious to me when I was 10 years old. So if at 10 years old I was ready you know, to say, fuck this game, I don't want to play this stupid life game, this is idiotic. Um, you know, obviously, it wasn't that I needed a whole lot of information. I had to do a bunch of calculus in my head to figure out the rights and wrongs and goods and evils and figure out whether I was addicted or not addicted. I mean, I didn't have any um, understanding or philosophy broad enough, uh, contextual enough, to lead me to that conclusion rationally. I mean, strictly rationally. Um, I was led to it subjectively in the sense that from my value equations, from what I early became attached to and found um, meaningful, um, yeah, the equation didn't make any sense. My little animal friends were living and dying in horror every day, and that to me was unacceptable. So right there I was done. I was already done, okay? <laughs> the little ants in the anthill, no one was giving a shit. They were dying horribly, even with my you know, little magnifying glass. And, yeah, I did singe a few. Um, and you're like, fuck this. What the fuck is this? This is, this is stupid. How, why am I even allowed to do that? I mean, I was even doing it. I'm sitting there, and I'm focusing this on. I'm saying, why am I even able to do this? Why is this even an invention? Why should, why should, why should this be possible? Um, it just seemed so out of control, such nonsense. So from my early perspective, yeah, it was already fail. I could already see the fail. I could see the dead relatives. I could see the suffering people. I could see the one-legged man. I could see the three-legged dog. I could see the shit with little worms in it. I could see the caterpillars burned off the trees. I could see this shit and say, this is stupid. 
Um, why, why, why are we caught up in this? Why are we, what are we chasing? And I had some vague notion that there was some paradise you were trying to head for. You know, you grew up, you're going to be married, and you have this, that, and the other thing. But even that didn't make a whole lot of sense because I was looking around saying, I don't see the magic. I don't see the gold anywhere that these adults have. Um, <laughs> they don't look all that functional to me. They don't look like they're all that fucking goddamn happy. Um, so whatever it is to be that, maybe I don't even want to be that either. Um, so none of it looked all that fucking charming. Especially when you get the real life disappointments, the lies, the propaganda, you know, they set you up and tell you how great school is going to be and all that kind of crap. And you get there and you find out this fucking sucks. You know, a bunch of assholes telling me what to do all fucking goddamn day. And, uh, you know, they sold me that like that was going to be some great paradise, some big fun. I could be, oh, I'd be like the grown up kids get to go to the shit fucking school and have a bunch of fucking nags tell me what to fucking do all day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it was just fail at every, you know, every turn, and then every question is answered by bullshit. You know, Santa Claus did it, or Easter Rabbit says so, or God, or some other bullshit. Just more lies. Lies piled on top of lies. So, yes, as a 10-year-old, I could figure out that these fuckers are all lying about what the fuck's going on here. They're making up bullshit, like... Somehow God knows what he's doing, you know, and he has a plan, a secret plan that nobody could know. Well, fuck secret plans. I mean, realistically, I, you know, yeah, I needed a real plan. I needed something, you know, something rational. And no one was talking anything rational. And so then later on, you find out about this penis thing and that, you know, you, you, it actually does have a mission. It doesn't just... You know, it's not just a personal entertainment device. It actually can be used in some extended <laughs> manner um, with others. And, uh, yeah, that that might be kick-ass. And so for a few weeks or months or whatever, yeah, okay, you're in the game now because now you know there's something for your penis to do. But you're still just going along for the ride, right? I mean, you're just like, okay, you know, you know, the at least the penis can have a good time, but the rest of me is still stuck here shitting and pissing and doing all the other um, weird and bizarre, stupid things that living things do. Um, so yeah, even that failed. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I'll concede that the addiction is strongest when that's the motivation, when you have some simple body part screaming for attention. Um, that does make it easier to see the cheese, you know, and to chase the cheese. Uh... But again, it's just an illusion. All right, now we'll get to Pyro's argument. And Pyro's argument's always the same argument. He somehow thinks rocks are wanting. Like, you know, a rock is, you know, if you gave a rock a choice to be a rock or to be a living thing, it would say, oh, yeah, I want to go to McDonald's. I mean, come on. It's just such bullshit. Like, somehow it's deprivated. And so he, it's the same argument, too. It's basically, you know... A, a 10 billion people is better than 5 billion, 100 billion is better than 10 billion, 100 gazillion is better than, you know, 100 billion. Uh, I mean, somehow the more, the better. You know, like somehow matter just really, really, really wants to be addicted, psychotic, loony nonsense mushing around. And, um, you know, so what if there's some casualty involved? <laughs> you know, so what if... Um, it does turn to shit way too often. And again, so now that, so that's where the subjective argument gets in here. Too, because I would argue, okay, the typical human's going to be not what I was. It's not going to grow up saying, this is bullshit, and then you keep looking for some kind of explanation. So they're not going to, they're not going to be demanding the explanation. They're just going to get caught up in the addiction. They're just going to keep, you know, chasing and running, chasing and running, depending on what impulse is pushing on them. Um, but always moving, you know, they're never going to stop and look around and say, what the fuck am I doing? Um, and that's psychology. And so that's the psychology of this thing. And it's so, so hard to argue past that because it is personal. We, we do this thing personally. And so we're not in some objective chamber somewhere, some place where we are void of, of our own personal impulses, you know, some place where we are perfectly comfortable and perfectly satisfied and perfectly intellectual, you know, beyond any addiction or desire and capable of having an objective conversation about what purpose is served by doing this little chasey thing over and 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 over, and over, and over, and over for four billion years. 
um, in different forms, but, you know, it's all the same game. Uh, and so then it comes down to this definition, this personal definition of uh, acceptable, okay? And that's really what it comes down to for these people, is until it gets unacceptable for them personally, yeah, they're all for it. And that definition of acceptable, of course, is, has, has, has evolved through time. I mean, there was people in the middle of the Black Plague, you know, still fornicating, still having kids, still saying, yeah, let's throw some more little victims onto the ride, even though they really realistically didn't have as much control over birth as they do now. But I'm sure, even if they had condoms back then, there would be assholes who said in the middle of the Black Plague, oh yeah, let's have another kid, you know, because the other one died, <laughs> you know, so let's have another one so he can die too. And, uh, you know, go through suffering. Maybe he get smallpox. Maybe he can get Black Plague, survive, and then get smallpox three weeks later. It'll be super. And uh, that was the mentality. Um, look, people 200 years ago had surgery without anesthesia. Yeah, they said, okay, sign me up. And they did it because they were so desperate to live. Or at least somebody else was so desperate that they lived that they decided to tie them down and, you know, do surgery on them. Um, and so Pyro would say okay to that. Yeah, okay, sign me up for that risk. Okay, <laughs> that, that uh, <clears throat> you know, I'm going to be so desperate to live that it's going to be all right for you to, <clears throat> you know, pull my liver out while I'm still a conscious. Um, yeah, obviously, I'm not going to, no, no, thank you. No, 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 no. Um, and, yeah, so again, so that's the subjective part of this, is that everybody has these definitions, um, but is there anything up that we can call objective? And again, so again, it's arguing through the psychology, and that's what I would argue is, is that you really have to have the psychology discussion first, I suppose, about what is psychology. What is, what, what are we seeing it for what it really is, or are we seeing it for what we, our ego has turned it into? What some other piece of our desire, our addiction, has made it into? Um, I've, you know, I've used this analogy before, but yeah, I mean, life is always written as a pretty little happy little bumblebees flying blah blah blah, fluffy little bulbous word, okay? It's never written as life is a metallic, hard uh, cruel you know, just unyielding to anything compassionate or decent in, in its real form in its natural state life is harsh it is, it is nasty shit and uh, but that's not the human perception. The humans have keeps keep trying to fluffy it up, keep trying to you know marshmallow, um, you know this 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 gruel, this dirt, this rock. Um, all right. So where am I going here? So yeah, I don't want to get redundant, but it's, it's just no way to get around that. Um, but this idea that a rock is deprived is just idiotic. That the source. Okay, let's let's do it this way. You know, in the universe, we're always looking for the first cause. You know, everything's cause and effect. It's a deterministic universe. Matter moves in its ways. And, you know, that's the way it is. Um, but if we're looking at the narrow circumstance of life, we can trace that to a first cause, in a sense. You can trace, especially for sentient life. So let's start with the first sentient life form, the first organism that was capable of feeling an ouch. Maybe you couldn't say ouch, but it felt ouch. It felt attraction and it felt repulsion. It felt it. It didn't just react. It wasn't just a reflex. It felt it first and then it reacted to the feeling. There was a first organism that did that. And what did that circumstance create? It, that's really the first need cause. It created a thing called need. Now there was a need. Now the organism needed to be in a state of mind, a state of being, a, a conscious state that was relevant. And I would argue that that need need not exist. There's no need for it. There's no need in the universe. There's no, there's no whine or ache or pain or want. There's no want without that organism. So the organism is the cause. The cause is in the creation of the need machine. We are need machines. We are not satisfaction machines. We are deprivated machines. We are wanting machines. We are not satisfied machines. Um, we're not made to be satisfied. We're made to be unsatisfied. 
That's the nature of the chase, the want, creating the illusion of accomplishment, of the illusion of that, that yes, something I want is over there. It's over there. It's someplace. I've got to go get it because that's my biology says is what the game is. And the game is this biology survives. And it's a DNA mission. It's not an intelligent mission. It's a fucking molecule replicating itself. It is stainless steel, hard jaws of snappy death kind of, of a machine that is the core. And it, it, it just can't, in fairness... <laughs> you know, fluff that up and say, no, all this contrived and bullshit need is somehow has real merit. Um, you're just chasing a dissatisfaction that was drilled into you. Pieces of you, again, I will metaphor it, were taken from you at your birth to create the illusion that you needed to get somewhere, that you needed to be somewhere, that you needed to do this attraction repulsion thing to accomplish, uh, to succeed to be um, alive and to stay alive <clears throat> and even that is what's the psychology of the mission the staying alive thing isn't that just psychology screaming I mean we basically program people to be obsessed with it I don't think the obsession is even natural um, because animals aren't doing it animals aren't trying to survive they're trying to maintain a state of conscious being. They're trying to achieve comfort. They're not trying to survive. And comfort is derived through doing what survival requires. That's their, their, their being essentially manipulated by psychology into a forced march um, where they must keep chasing and must keep playing because they don't know any better. They don't know how to get off the ride. They don't even know how to analyze the ride. And again, that comes back to the human again. <clears throat> have we analyzed it? Have we, have, is this conversation about analyzing what the psychology is, what the mechanisms are, um, or is it about I feel, I think, you know, in this, this erroneous way? I mean, the, the, the argument has no logic base. It is entirely becomes this stupid subjective argument about <clears throat> well, how much is this pain and how much is this pleasure worth? And how much of this pain are you willing to endure for your 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 moments of glory? And uh, like I said, for for a pyro mentality, yes, the, the 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 these positives seem to be so big, seem to be gigantic black letters, and the negatives he is able to turn them into little tiny red numbers. Um, especially if he doesn't have to endure them. I mean, especially if he's not the one at risk, especially if he's the one born with both his arms and both his legs, and he's not, um, you know, blighted with cancer at 10 or some other bullshit. Um, not to say he wouldn't put that in his little glory, you know, I survived cancer at 10 years old. Maybe that would be how he would uh, uh, um, describe the circumstance and say, yes, it was all worth it. Um, you know, because it's subjectively he is obsessed with the mission. The, the DNA completely owns his psychology, owns, owns his perception, and he can't, you know, it, the hard part is is arguing. You're trying to explain to somebody who's, who's certain that their synthetic cheese is real cheese. And so how do you get to the core of that cheese to explain, to show, to illustrate that it's not made out of anything except your own deprivation, your own sense of dissatisfaction or unfulfillment or incompleteness, that somehow you need to live another day because you have something you need to accomplish and something that you need to accomplish that's outside of your own um, entrapment and outside of the accomplished the need that is created by your own existence i mean just living creates superfluous extra need as soon as somebody knows you as soon as somebody's your friend all of a sudden now you have a new obligation you have a new a new need to serve a new interest to serve and so it's very hard to even live a life where you can escape without leaving some need on the table some some deprivation that's going to be created, some new deprivation created because you don't exist, because you no longer exist. And so there's all, you know, one of Pyro's, the argument he's always using is that somehow we have the choice to get out. And so that way it's a fail safe ride. Now it's not even close to that. Kevorkian did seven hard years in prison for helping people who were in desperate need. 
to get out. Desperate need. And we, the state won't even allow people in desperate need to get out gracefully, let alone people like myself who have no desperate need, who only have the need of their own judgment screaming to them saying, you're caught up in bullshit. Uh, you're living a, 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 a lie that carries with it a huge, preposterously silly risk for absolutely no real reward. That yes, you might get your Cheeto here or there, but you're you're vulnerable to all kinds of horrors, um, debilitating, ugly, nasty, painfully, ugh, awful shit that is sitting there waiting to fall on you. And so yeah, from my judgment, it's a silly risk. There's <laughs> it's no point in it at all. Um, cat, sorry. Uh, it's always a distraction. Uh, so again, psychology. What do you want? Damn it. Ugh, I don't want to pet you because I'm busy. Cat, cat. So let's prove it's the cat. It's not something else I'm playing with. Um, uh, so where was I? <laughs> yeah. Um, so again, it's the positive-negative thing is going to be the, 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 where the argument sits. Is that is, can you possibly can you lose the positive by never creating the need for it? In a sense, I mean, if you can't you can't be non-existent. The non-existent are not sitting in some purgatory somewhere, screaming to exist. It's a nonsensical notion. But it's one that is easy psychologically. To, it's a trap that's just so easy to fall into, just because of the sense of our the depth of our addiction. It's almost impossible for us to imagine the world without the synthetic cheese in it, just waiting for something to chase it. I mean, it, that's sort of the idea of it: is, is that we can't even conceive of the universe existing without something chasing the cheese. Uh, because the cheese is real in our head, and if there isn't something chasing it, that somehow the system is broken. So there's nothing chasing. Um, but it is all manufactured by a DNA molecule. This whole perception of value is manufactured by the molecule <laughs> over four billion years of evolution. And the game is not to create a human being. The game is equally just as just as real. Uh, to create uh, tyrannosauruses and great white sharks and lampreys and uh, even AIDS viruses. That's what the game is doing. The game is just creating a f things that are effective and getting themselves reproduced. And that's all. Um, and by any standard. And all of this fucking psychology crap has, is just a tool, like a claw, like a tooth, like any other tool. It's a tool that gets animals through and, and uh, enables them to survive the the carnage, the melee, the whatever, the, the 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 pageantry of the competition for this survival thing that we have as as a species completely glorified. Just just turned it into it is the first deity um, is survival. And it's the first lie. Again, because none of the animals are surviving on purpose. <laughs> They're only chasing one Cheeto at a time, one day at a time. Um, and they, there's no capacity to, to understand the risk assessment or to make the risk assessment or describe the risk assessment, um, to analyze fully what they're getting caught up in, what they are caught up in. And um, the analysis, I think, when it's done rationally, purely, leads to only one conclusion, that yes, things are better off dead. Things are better off not caught up in a stupid game of, of sentient risk, um, of harsh, brutal um, impositions of repulsion in the nature of pain and suffering and misery. Um, uh, imposed for no purpose, for no accomplishment, but for the illusion of, of trying to reattach pieces that were never removed in the first place. It's only a mental, a psychological illusion that you need any of this shit. There is no real need. There's just psychology projecting a need. 
Yeah, that's probably enough. Feels like a lot of talking. Um, yeah, so Pyro just doesn't deal with the 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 argument that you have to you can't just do this. Well, I think all the negatives add up to all the positives, and I put them on my scales of wobble dobble, and it all <laughs> balances out. And it's all okay because every time people do that, they'll do it. They, it doesn't matter how I change the scenario. I, like I said, I could kill. I could give you a scenario where three billion people are killed in the next week in a Holocaust, and the survivors are all going to say, "Oh well, it's you know, yeah, it was really bad, nasty, but it's okay. It's okay. It's over. It's over with. So it, never mind. It's in the past." Um, you make excuses for anything because you're survival machines. You're not thinking machines. You're not logic machines. You're completely owned by your desire, by your ego, by your sense of unfinishedness that somehow you, through the human race, need to keep marching into the future because you think you're going to somehow accomplish, that you're actually going to um, someday finally catch the dragon. Um, and you won't because there's no dragon. You're just chasing dragon farts. You're, you're chasing a sense of something, nothing real, just a delusion of, of needed accomplishment, um, needed progress, needed something else. Like you got to just one more flavor of ice cream, one more flavor of, I just keep piling them on, you know, it doesn't matter what you throw in there next, just so it's one more. And it's always going to be one more. You're always going to be dissatisfied because that's the nature of the beast. And the only way you get out of being that is recognizing that you're owned by psychology. And um, the alternative way, the easy way, I have to admit, I had the easy way. Uh, the easy way for me was to um, care <clears throat> um, about things right from the start. On, on their rudimentary level uh, to, to, to see the very basics from the very start and not to get caught up in any lies and so if you can avoid the lies and you look at life for what it is and you see it happening there's no there's no reason to justify it and once you don't justify it you can see for the, the disgraceful debauchery <laughs> that it is um, but again it is it, you, the, the, the obligation is still going to be to argue first through the psychology and get somebody to try to be honest before they're ever going to realize or see that what they're chasing is an illusion of accomplishment. There is no, there is no, first there is no accomplishment, but to clean up the mess need makes by existing, the deprivation that exists, that's the only thing we can do while we're here is to satisfy a deprivation that didn't need to exist a deprivation that's completely without purpose or function uh, yeah okay now it's probably enough all right we'll call it enough is the cat well the cat should go out it's, it's trying to sleep now it's really sticking its claws in my head stop that can't you find something to do? I mean, you know, can't you find, like, some cat entertainment? Yeah. Huh. Sleep a few hundred more hours. Whatever. <clears throat> if I could sleep all day, I would do it. No problem there. <clears throat> okay, anyway, until next time.